Uh, so we are going to Constructora. It's a pretty long walk, but it's a really beautiful day. So happy Valentine's Day, by the way. So romantic. It's beautiful here. So we ordered the cleats and walked back to the boat and now we are going to be getting a Valentine's dinner somewhere. Somewhere. Okay, we're having an impossible time finding a place to eat because everything is reserved for Valentine's Day. But every time we go into these restaurants, they're completely empty, but they won't seat us. So my only possible theory is that when you reserve a table here, you reserve it for the whole night. Because otherwise, every place would be able to take us. All that, and we're ending up in the restaurant right in the marina <laughs> called Das Mar. And it is, uh, we called ahead and they are open and they have room. So that's where we're going. Also, it's raining. Yay. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody! <laughs> Today is the big day, the day that we're going to paint the head and transform it from what looks like a project site to a head. So I'm going to be using bilge coat because technically a shower, at least in my opinion, is a bilge. I mean, you have a lot of water that's running, every surface is being wet constantly, and the ability to make it easy to clean is a huge one for me, and that's what bilge coat does. Like, you can get oil, which is not that we're bathing in oil, but you can get oil, dirt, grime, all those things, they just slip right off of bilge coat. And most importantly, it holds up well to a really wet environment. For example, deck paint and stuff, if something sits on it that's wet, the paint will actually blister off. That's ugly. And a shower is bound to have standing water at some point. Like, if we're healed in a certain way, there might be an area that I thought would drain better than it actually does, and then the issue. So by using bilge coat, if we do have any areas like that, they'll be a little more hardy and a little more durable. We've come down here for a little outing. There's split rock there. And it's just a really pretty view.
we're here in Sajeta and we're checking out the lighthouse. And this one isn't as uh, historic as the other one that we went to that was like a manned lighthouse. This one's new and electronic. More light than house. <laughs> <laughs> so, the sink came for the head and we have to figure out where exactly we want to put it so that we can get the measurements to tell the guys what, where, how to cut the wood so we can build the shelf so we can have storage underneath the sink. So when I ripped everything out, I didn't paint this wall yet because this wall is actually going to have the cabinets and stuff, so I wanted to keep it bearish wood, that way it's easier attached to. But the nice thing, this is the old line where our previous counter level was, and that's where the sink was. So it was at this height. So that's a good starting point to figure out where we want to put everything from there. So, where do you want stuff? That's actually a good height. Right there? Yeah. Okay. So literally this minus the sink and that's our height? Yeah. Okay. That's easy. <laughs> Let's trade places. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, no, because my toes will be inside the cabinet. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's think about it. So if we have this here, so if this comes out this far, then you're going to have a shelf that continues that way for the uh, shower heads and stuff. Shower heads here. Sure. This is where it is, because this okay. is where you stand to shower. Yeah, well, actually, yeah. Yeah. So you shower, you wash your hands after you pooped. <laughs> so you're just going to have to go like this. Yeah, and it's not like you're doing this for hours. Yeah. You're just washing your hands. Yeah. Okay, so the bowl goes here? Bowl goes here. Right here. This is the up. cabinet, right here? Mm-hmm. Oh. That was my plan. Well, then you'll have all that mm -hmm. to stand on. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, put this back. Mm -hmm. Faucet's there. Wash your hands like this. Mm -hmm. So the faucet just comes up out, like pretty much where this guy is? Mm. Faucet is. You know, faucet could be in the corner. That's what I mean. Oh, I thought you meant like on the side here. No, no, no. no. Yeah, I like that. And you have this, so then this is your faucet. I like that. Okay. I, I like that being the faucet. So that's nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, so this is a good level. Okay. So this minus this is the top of our cabinet. So where your hand is, is <laughs> the top of the cabinet. Well, uh, you want me to hold but, this? But I can just, this minus the, minus the height. Yeah, okay. And that's our cabinet. Yeah. Okay. So I did a mock-up here, like a, a very rough mock-up. So we got these cleats that we're going to then skin with the planks that we're going to use to make the cabinet. And our vessel sink is going to sit on top of it all. Uh, and the idea is that this hole here is going to be our access to this large storage area inside. And there we can store cleaning supplies and most importantly, the dirt that we use for a composting toilet because we've been using this composting toilet for about seven years now and it worked great so we really like it. Uh, my next job is going to be to mount these cleats get everything structural secured once we have this set then we can go back to the wood shop and order the planking that we're going to need for the sides of this thing so that way we can skin it and then that's it it'll be uh, pretty straightforward. Over here this whole area that looks like a nightmare uh, <laughs> I need to mount the cleats as well, that way the same thing. We can get the wood and cover this all because it looks really, really bad. White pine for the structure for the sink cabinet, and then the cleats for covering the chain plates and all, that is a uh, starfruit wood, which I've never heard of anyone using that wood before, but that is one of the woods that they use a lot in their wooden boats here. Holds up really well in a marine environment. I never would have thought. And that's going to be the cleats that we're going to mount. And then the sheeting that we're going to use is going to be Japanese cedar. Two reasons. One, it's really, really cheap here. And the other reason is it's actually really rot and decay resistant. So I know white pine is one of the worst woods to use in a boat ever because pine rots so quickly. But if you keep it properly oiled, you can actually make them last pretty much indefinitely. Like any wood can actually last a long time if you maintain it properly. 
Okay, so a while back, I did the chain plates on the other side of the hull. Now we're going to be doing the starboard ones. So you can see they're not too pretty looking, which is part of the issue that we were having. So I got this rust reversal agent. It's like OSFO in the US. It pretty much just paint it on, let it dry, cover it in paint. The way we're going to cover these, they're going to be easy to access in the future, sort of. Just take off the screws, boards come off, we have access to the chain plates. And then we can do maintenance on them, keep them clean. So it's Monday night and we've got a video to give you guys tomorrow. So in order to upload it, we have to go to a place with Wi-Fi. We're going to go right next door. Grab a Wi-Fi beer. This is good timing because I have this like rust reversal stuff. Just letting that dry. Once it's dry, which takes a bit of time, then we're going to paint it. later on today we're going to the museum and then we're meeting up with some friends and we're gonna have uh, some social things that we're gonna be doing these guys are glued and screwed on so I used bronze fasteners because I don't want to ever have the fasteners fail and bronze actually lasts a lot longer than stainless steel on a boat so the bronze fasteners it is with wood glue because this is wood on the wood so that gets wood glue these down here are wood on the iron so I used glue, which is epoxy with the thickener agent, and then you mix it up, turns into like a, a peanut butter-ish consistency, you just smear it on there. So this one is completely glued. There's no fasteners because this is solely on the iron. I'm going to start building the uh, cabinet for the sink. <laughs> Here's a little trick you can do. If you're like me, and you didn't bring a level with you when you crossed an ocean because you weren't planning on rebuilding the inside of your boat, you can use water, because gravity makes everything level. So right now we are nose down by a bit, which means that there's not even a real point in trying to make it level. Everything that I'm building, I'm building with a slight incline this way. That way, when we go in the water, it is then hopefully level. So let's look at this cup here. You can see the water is close to level. It's nose down just a bit. Now, one thing I can do is set it so that this line is level with the line of the old head. And that'll tell us what height to have this table leg. Because I don't have the leg attached yet, so I can still flex it up and down a bit. So if you think, hey, I'm going to build something real quick in the boat, it's not going to go quick. Every single thing is custom and intricate. It's a long process. So if you ever decide, hey, I'll just do a quick repair while I'm here, it's not gonna be quick. Well, I just had x-rays taken. I don't think it's broken. We currently have three seacocks in this boat, and we're going to be taking that down to two seacocks. What do you think? I'm amazed. It looks so good. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.